Coming back to the Warhammer 40k tabletop hobby has been interesting to say the least. Seeing all the leaps that have been made over the years, not just in miniature quality, but also the hobbying side with painting and assembly, has set my mind ablaze with ideas of process and possibility. Even though things like shaders and contrast paints existed to a degree before, the easier access to a more consistent product has greatly improved my production line, turning gray piles of shame to fairly detailed works of art. The easier access I have found to airbrushes as well as the expansive options for paint products designed to work for miniatures has also been a great boon for me. I wouldn't consider myself a high up display painter or anything. I respect those in that field too much to make that claim. But my sort of Bob Ross-ish approach to painting has done way better than I could have possibly imagined because of this shift. One of my favorite interactions that I've come across so far are between contrast and metallic paints. There are some processes there that liven up surfaces and visual effects beyond the simple flat color finishes of my youth, and sometimes these feel faster to complete than ever before. So I'd like to impart a couple of these ideas to you. Real quick, before we begin, thanks to everyone that have been helping grow the channel. It is exciting to see the interest and hopefully I can continue to provide you all with more content going forward. If you're new to the Kimmerix project and wish to see more tabletop content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Maybe the like if you're so inclined. Let's take a look at what has me so worked up with the contrast and metallic paints. A lot of this stemmed from a video I came across looking for inspiration with how to paint my Iron Warrior Legionary kill team. Several painters suggested the use of Citadel's snakebite leather over a gunmetal base color to achieve the brass look. This quickly became a how did I not think of this moment, which in turn became a scattering of possible ideas based on this simple trick. Let's start with some basic color theory first. Color is simply the eye's interpretation of light as reflected or directed off of a surface as a specific wavelength. A simple idea, but also a little more elaborate than that. We'll keep it basic though. In the concept of the Iron Warrior brass effect, the surface area starts out as a gray metallic. If you consider it to simply be gray, this might be easier. Contrast paint is closer to how a color staining or glazing works. It can be very thin and transparent in areas. It also has the potential to build up in crevices and become more opaque. Normally, when a contrast is applied over a gray surface, that pigment would appear a bit darker than normal, but the neutral gray would be moved towards whatever color is part of the contrast. This is due to the light passing through all the glazes, reflecting off the surface and returning to your eye with all of that information. In the case of snakebite leather, this would be a yellow-orange that builds up to a brown, an ideal brass color. The trick with this is that the gray is made up of reflective particles that give it the metallic feel. When contrast is applied to such a surface, the thin areas of orangish yellow maintain that shine and even adjust it a little from the neutral white into the yellow orange. The thick areas prevent the shine altogether, making it feel like a worn down or weathered spot. This became a revelation. After completing my Iron Warriors kill team, I had decided on gathering a new Thousand Sun 40k army in preparation for my return to the Big Hammer universe. Most people talked about how the best approach to this was to paint the whole unit gold and then apply flat color to them as it would save time. I fully agree and had done this for my Warp Coven kill team, but then the flat color needed to be expanded on with shaders and the like to make the surface not seem so flat. But what if contrast could fix this whole problem, keeping the speed but also applying detail with minimal effort? I have to say, I love the results, and I'm actually a little shocked by them. The blue I ended up picking is from the Citadel line. It is called Asserman Blue. As far as contrast goes, it is one of the lighter blues that has a fully colored top end. Some contrast pigment doesn't provide full coverage in their thinnest area, as it is expected that a white undercolor will act as the color's peak. But Asserman Blue seemed thick enough to provide some level of control while giving full coverage to any surface areas I wanted to be blue. If I applied too much, I would have an extra brush on hand to lift the excess off. This would limit the thick to thin levels across all the sorcerers and marines painted. 
The surprising part came with how the metallic side panned out. I was expecting to be met with a shiny blue light from beneath the glaze, but the gold persisted. Depending on the angle and lighting, the blue would become almost foil-like. A nice effect for the sorcerers and the golem sarcophagi in their control. I decided to expand on this with the use of Citadel's Luxion Purple for a portion of the army, Luxion being very close to what made Asserman a good option, with its thin elements still having a bunch of pigment. A similar result, purple with occasional golden shine passing through the surface. As a comparison point, I had decided on using silver as a base for the Asserman on my demon prints. I feel the results are about as expected, the silver being very close to pure white and its reflective particles pushes the Asserman beyond its normal peak blue into a very light blue and depending on light angle, a fully reflective white. This led me to an idea. If you consider metallics as just the color they represent without the shine, you could explore the idea of gray to white zenithal highlights, but using gunmetal to silver or chrome. I explored this idea with my intercessor kill team. These were primed black and then fully covered in Vallejo gunmetal. Chrome was then applied from directly above, so when the Aldari emerald contrast was set, the upper half had a higher level of reflection, whereas the lower portion stayed much darker, drawing the eye to the upper portion of the armor. This idea has since spread to other forms of metallic reflection, as the products on the market aren't just limited to precious metals. Pre-tinted metallics, shifter metallics, pearlescence, there is still much to experiment with. Maybe when I finally crack into my Zinch Demons, we'll try and see how deep this rabbit hole really goes. The reverse of this technique has also improved my approach to creating specific types of metal. A quick concept first. Most metallic paints are simply extremely fine glitter suspended in a painting medium. Normally, it is preferable to apply these kinds of metallics to darker surfaces, usually black. This way, you get the most out of the metallic effect. This is because the color used under the metallic paint will show through if not fully covered with excessive amounts of paint. This brought up a fun idea. Rather than limiting the undercolor, why not embrace it? There are several darker contrast paints that work as an almost non-metallic metal start. Not fully, of course, but they could easily be interpreted as a type of metal without any need for shine. Citadel's Garagax Sewer, for instance, has been a great base for golds and bronzes, basically any metal in the brown and orange family. After setting a base down of this kind of contrast, applying a very thin, almost dry brush effect of gold or bronze allows for the metal to exist and react with light while not feeling overwhelming. This method worked wonders with all the Zangors I had to paint. Priming them in white allowed the teal to white skin tone to be easily applied, but applying gold over a light base would have just looked terrible. Starting from Garagax and applying very little gold keeps the visual appeal that the contrast creates, while giving metallic shine and shimmer. Sort of a halfway between full metal and non-metallic metal. An interesting looking compromise. Other metals can be paired like this as well. Applying a plate mail or gunmetal over a dark gray contrast or even a gray blue can yield some interesting results, while limiting the flattening effect that sometimes occurs with too much metallic paint. Both of these methodologies have been serving me well so far. Again, all of these new products and systems that have been added to the hobby since I last partook in it have me really excited with everything I have yet to even try in my search for answers to questions I don't know how to ask yet. Like I said, I wouldn't consider these ideas to be very display painter-esque, but maybe the method could give you some inspiration in your attempts to tackle some of your more outstanding projects without feeling nearly as overwhelmed. Got a ton of Aldari to paint? Hit them with silver and pick a color to make those space elves stand out. Want your Grey Knights to seem a little bit different? All over pearlescent with a layer of light blue-gray contrast over the top. Exploration and experimentation, some of the most freeing parts of a hobby. Thanks for watching. In the description below, there is a link to our community Discord. We occasionally show off our projects there and talk about the hobby. So if you're interested, don't hesitate to join. As always, likes for the like god and subscribes for the subscribe throne. I am Kimmerix, and I'll see you in the next one.